chapter 8. Um, if you go through the uh, verse 14 through verse 24, you will read the story um, about the, the sorcerer, who is uh, Simeon the sorcerer. And you will also read about the intervention uh, of a man that listened in the spirit. Uh, Peter when he was available and this was a story of a man that came and joined the church and he joined the church but basically he had been living in a way that is not before right before God and he also brought that into the church it Philip did not do what Philip supposed to do um, basically stopping that spirit uh, of a sorcerer but it took Peter, who have a higher level of discernment, and also is another apostle that oversees the, that mission. Can I just stop here a little bit and say, oversees that mission? Now, there is no reason for us to be uh, disturbed about um, why Philip was quiet on what Peter is not quiet about. Uh, Peter was involved because Peter oversees Philip's work. And when we are operating in the kingdom, there is nothing wrong of having uh, checks and balancing. And most times, Christians misunderstand that because of pride. There is nobody that say that an evangelist cannot also operate in a place where they did not see something that an apostle can see, vice versa. So Philip dealt nicely with the sorcerer. An apostle, Peter, came in. He did not find it funny. He had to deal with that spirit because that spirit of a sorcerer or basically witchcraft spirit blinds the eyes even of believers who cannot see. So they cannot see what he got or what he was carrying. Uh, we remember that this particular man, Simeon, uh, bewitched the whole city. So uh, bewitchment or in quote manipulation is something that sorcerers got at their fingertips. Philip did not catch that. He took another man of God to catch it and dealt with it seriously. So, and I believe that that is a very powerful collaboration in ministry that needs to continue to occur. Many part times, um, some very quality pastors uh, invite someone who have a different gift, called and anointed to come into their ministry. And most of the times, it does help a lot because there's something about ministry blending or anointing of grace and those are some of the things that we have to learn to practice because it is of god when people are eating food from your table and they only eat your food at times um it's good for them to eat your food but also when you know that many people are coming in and going it will be wise to on times involve someone different but have the same spirit of god to call him in and look, and maybe he can find something that you could not see. It's not that the person is blind, it just means that God is using a different person, a different tool to carry out strategic work. But let's look into uh, uh, another thing this morning about another phase of discernment from verse 25. And it says, So when they are testified and preached the word of the Lord, I'm reading from chapter 8 of the book of Acts. Praying the gospel of many villages, preaching the gospel of many villages and Samaritans. Uh, now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, and also under under Candace, all right. Some people call it Candace. Some people call it Candace, the queen of Ethiopia, who had charged of all her treasury, and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning, and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit of the of Philip, the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, 
How can I, unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read says, And he was laid as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shelter is silent. So he opened not his mouth, and his humiliation, his justice, was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or other person? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at the scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to order water, and the eunuch asked, See, there is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe the Lord Jesus is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And but Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and baptized him. Now when he came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, and so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on the way rejoicing. But Philip was found in Azotus, and passing through, they preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Now, quick question for you uh, this morning. Why did he do that? See, Philip illustrates the importance of, of a leader who can adapt. And I say one more time, a leader who can adapt to the new situation and meet the need. And he is flexible. So flexibility is the name of the game if you are going to operate with God. The ability of being flexible even in our spirit. Philip had been preaching and praying for the sick in Samaria, while in the middle of the revival, an angel spoke to him and told him to go south. The guys wrote, Philip had to adjust his sails and redirect his course on the road of Gaza. He read, he read the situation, a significant official and treasurer of Ethiopia. This is a high-ranking officer. Stopping and reading scriptures? Really? Philip seized the opportunity to introduce the man to Christ. How do you as a leader rate similar situations? So there are certain things that spirit-filled leaders will be involved in. Number one is saying your responsibilities, your primary responsibilities. You see, we can be engaged in higher level stuff, carrying out work from state to state, from country to country, but there are some targeted people that God wants in his kingdom. And Philip is an evangelist. There are targeted people that God wants in his kingdom. When that happens, we God will be able to amend and make ourselves available by being flexible. In verse 25, we saw that. Also, surrendering your rights. As we saw, Philip didn't depend or demand his own way, but remained flexible. He left the revival to go to a desert. How willing are we to be flexible with God? How willing are we that we don't quote scriptures to God and tell the Lord and tell ourselves and tell our friends the 1,000 reasons why that what we're doing is the perfect will of God and any other intuition is not of God. The ability and the discernment. How flexible are you going to be when you are being told certain tasks to be done and then later on there's something else that came in, that, that will come in and God say, turn right or turn left. And then you get privilege. You can say, well, you know, that's not my calling. We give justification. Well, Lord, you know, this is winter. This is summer. Lord, you know, I don't have to do any of this. You all the ministers there. Lord, you know, when I was in uh, dealing with this situation, uh, Peter came and he had to deal with it. Lord, why don't you, you know, we can create things or get jealous. Lord, since Peter came here, and showcase that he knows it all that. Why don't you send him? He knows everything. You see, oh, there's something about God. God studies our heart. You see, we never saw any clash between Peter and Philip in the previous situation. 
God watches man's heart and promoted him. This man have been effective carrying out revivals after revival and even have to invite Peter to help God do certain things. And God watched his heart and God saw that this man is ready for the next level. Are you ready for the next level? Verse 29 and 30 talk about sensing your elevation, your revelation. Philip, listen to the Spirit of God. We speak through the people. Scriptural or spiritual intuition. God can speak to you through scripture. I've been able to read something that God wants me to do certain times, and that comes right from scripture. It was told, go and stay close to this person. Sharing your relationship. This Philip approached the need from a relational perspective, not just a result perspective. He saw the need of this higher level officer approached with a relational perspective. Approached. Since may we ask a question again, how is my approach? How is your approach? He did not go there and start making condemnations. When someone is close to the treasure, we know what can happen, right? People can blame them for being thieves to the point that he knows everything about the king's treasury. He did not go there with pointing fingers. He went there based on relationship. He went there to build the relationship. His words are soft. His words are words of that's healthy. His words were not seen as words of condemnation. What kind of words do we use when we are trying to attract a higher level leader into our congregation, into our network? What do you do? How do you take them? How do you perceive them? How do you receive them? Also, we also know here that he was showing his relevance. Philip started where the Ethiopian eunuch was and connected with him there, showing the relevance, securing also the response. Philip laid the man to the point of decision and saw result. So we are asked by God through determination and discernment to stay until we see result. We are not a one-man shot. We get done, Lord, you know, we accept Christ and that's it. It wasn't like Peter was obligating him. This man, God had already prompted the work. And he said, what stopped me from being baptized? And this man says, I have no problem, I'm here, you know. If you receive Jesus Christ in your life, if you show that you really accepted him, of course, let's go ahead and do it. In business, we call them closing the deal. If you ever done sales, that's what it means. Philip closed the deal. How faithful are we to close the deals? As we go into 2023, are we willing to close the deals? Are we willing to see opportunities that God lay out for us and not let it go? And not just say, well, you know, okay, Sarah, Sarah, another time will come to close that deal at the time. Because it's work. This man left his old crusade that's going on, revival that's going on, and flipped his old energy towards one man. And you cannot tell me that that is a mistake. Because as soon as he was done getting him to Christ, he disappeared. Another level. Hallelujah. Another level. Another level. How acquainted are we with God? We come to discernment. That will showcase the level of grace that will apply in our lives. The level of grace and the level of growth. The energy level and the grace level. I want to stop here this hour and ask us to be able to reflect on this because these are important things 